Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Rafiq Mustafa. Today we will discuss on type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. It is one of the most important topic in our medical college life for our exam. But beside exam, it has tremendous importance on our practical life because many diseases are related to type 1 hypersensitivity. So let's get inside in this topic. Suppose a patient has developed bronchial asthma. What type of hypersensitivity is the cause behind it? And the answer is that it is type 1 hypersensitivity is, is the cause behind the bronchial asthma. Before discussing the type 1 hypersensitivity, there are some facts. Here, to develop hypersensitivity, the first two things we, we require is that what is an antigen and the next one is the antibody. Here, in type 1 hypersensitivity, the antigen should be free and the antibody must be fixed. And then what are the antigens that uh, causes type 1 hypersensitivity? They are the mainly the allergens like pollens, animal tenders, food like nuts, shellfish, and various drugs to which most people do not exhibit a clinical symptom. And one of the most important drugs that, de uh, that develop type 1 hypersensitivity is penicillin. Next one is the mechanism of type 1 hypersensitivity. First, when an allergen gets inside our body, it causes formation of type, uh, formation of Ig antibody by the B cell. This Ig antibody then what uh, what it causes attachment with, with the muscle by its FCC FC region. We know that in antibody there are two regions. The head regions are called FAB region, and the tail regions are called FC regions. And by the FC region, the antibody get attached with, on the surface of mast cell or basophil. By the same way, if this allergen again attacks in our body, uh, this IgE antibody on the mast cell that are present preformed, that are preformed, and this allergen, uh, sorry, this uh, anti, anti antibody cross links with each other and sends a powerful stimuli inside the mast cell. And this stimuli causes release of various substances. And Remember one thing, to develop this hypersensitivity, there should be cross-linking of Ig antibody. Without the cross-link, uh, this hypersensitivity reaction cannot be developed. And after the release of this substance, uh, this release of substance are divided into two phase. One is the immediate phase, and other one is the late phase. So first come in the immediate phase. And in this immediate phase, there are pharmacostatic substances are released and within minutes. And these substances are preformed. And they cause the symptoms like edema, erythema, and itching. Substances which are reduced in immediate phase are mainly histamine, eosinophil chemotactic factor of anaphylaxis, which is shortly called ECFA, and serotonin. First, the histamine. Histamines are normally present in the granules of mast cell and basophil, and it is preformed. It causes vasodilation, capillary permeability, and smooth muscle contraction. So, what are the symptoms that causes? Uh, what are the what it what does system it cause? It causes vasodilation, capillary permeability, and smooth muscle contraction. And due to this histamine, there are disease disorder like allergic rhinitis, urticaria, and angioedema can occur. Remember one thing: in bronchial asthma, histamine doesn't play a role. So antihistamine is not suitable for bronchial asthma. The next substance is eosinophil chemotactic factor of anaphylaxis. It causes stimulation of the uh, eosinophil towards the site. And this uh, eosinophil causes release of histamine and other chemical mediators uh, from the master of basophil. And the third one is serotonin. Serotonin acts like the same way like of histamine. So the mechanism of histamine and serotonin is same. Now the late phase. Okay, the late phase occurs after the exposure of antigen, uh, almost six hours after the exposure of antigen. And the symptoms are erythema and induration can occur. And what are the substances that release in the late phase? First are the psoriatic substance of anaphylaxis or SRSA. This is the postaglandin and thromboxin. And last one is the platelet activating factor. Now the slow reactive substance of anaphylaxis or SRSA. It is mainly from, uh, consists of leukotrienes that are formed after six hours of the exposure of the antigen. And we need our former pathology class. We have, we know that there are there is a pathway called anachronic acid metabolism pathway, and it is divided into two pathways. Then 
and one is a cyclooxygenase pathway and another one is a lipooxygenase pathway these leukotrienes are produced by the lipooxygenase pathway and it can cause symptoms like increased vascular permeability and smooth muscle contraction and the thing to remember here is that in bronchial asthma the key role the key mediator is slow reactive substance anaphylaxis so here there is no uh, in bronchial asthma there will be no histamine so they are the key role will be played by slow reactive substance of anaphylaxis next one is the, what are the clinical features of type 1 hypersensitivity the clinical features are urticaria eczema rhinitis conjunctivitis and asthma now one of the most important thing of type 1 hypersensitivity is systemic anaphylaxis here the, it, it is a it is it is the most severe form of type 1 hypersensitivity and here bronchoconstriction and hypotension can occur and there are also maybe dizziness and other symptoms like bronchoconstriction hoarseness edema pruritus and urticaria can also develop here the cause is that this uh, how the there is the, it, it is caused by the same mechanism of type 1 hypersensitivity that ig will come ig will get attached to the surface of the muscle and the muscle uh, then ig will cross link with each other and then release of substances like histamine and serotonin such substances the same mechanism of type 1 hypersensitivity uh, here the causative agents are like food such as peanuts spinners shellfish bee venom and drugs such as penicillin now the anaphylactoid reaction here anaphyl in anaphylactoid reaction the chemical feature will be same like anaphylactic reaction but the mechanism of action will be different in the anaphylactic reaction we have seen that the ig will get ig will attach and the ig will cause the release of the substances but here anaphylactoid reaction there will be no ig the substances the antigens like drugs contrast media will directly act on the muscle or basophil and causes release of substances like histamine serotonin this so the difference between the anaphylactic and anaphylactoid reaction is that in anaphylactic reaction uh, there will be no ige involvement but in anaphylactic reaction there will be involvement of the ige now why such type of sensitivity symptoms uh, develops in only in allergic patients not not in non allergic patient in allergic patient there is a mechanism that the T helper two cell when uh, causes release of interleukin four, and this interleukin four stimulates B cell to class switch Ig to class switch IgG from IgE. Here, what happens when the allergen uh, enters our body, the B, uh, T helper two stimulates and releases interleukin four and stimulates the B cell. The B cell then causes class switching of IgG to IgE, but in non allergic patient such class switching will not uh, develop so here the igg will attack the allergen and we all know that there are no receptor of igg on the surface of mast cell so there will be no release of substance and there will be no symptoms in non allergic patient thank you if you like the video please subscribe the channel assalamu alaikum